my lineage is very simple indian classical hindustani traditional singers they were all singers sanskrit pandits written epics written uh, sanskrit hymns and sang dhrupad dhamar played pakhawaj and used the tanpura only even not harmonium was there so uh, they were court musicians at some point they were the priests of the maharajas they are basically from kashmir and then up and 600 years ago they came to bengal for uh, doing all the activities under the maharajas hindu priests brahmins and then my grandparents and their grandparents they started singing for the court and my parents are singers from gwalior and patiala schooling so at that environment when i was born i saw them singing practicing in the morning and in the evening and at the age of 2 my mom gave me a lap steel hawaiian guitar so long time later i found from my dad that a office colleague has given him this six string hawaiian guitar before i was born and my mom gave it to me that's how the the transit from the vocal to the instrumental has arrived during my childhood i have learned from great hawaiian steel guitarist rajat nandi and uh, at the age of 5 and 6 i learned western staff notation and the finger picking style and holding the bar with hawaiian songs and then i transformed that into indian classical music performance the technique i have adapted from that i have put them into the playing deep indian classical hindustani music then i learned from a teacher of sitar very popular in north calcutta haradhan rai choudhury and literally i was sitting on his lap and when and eating my uh, tiffin when he was teaching the classroom that was the environment and then he took me to pandit gokul nag the acharya gokul nag who is the father of pandit manilal nag the great sitarist and they belong to vishnupur schooling of music and that was my school time <clears throat> then after gokul dadu's demise i came in touch with pandit ajay chakravarti padmabhushan pandit ajay chakravarti from whom i have learned the singing style singing songs ragas and he was not only my guru but also mentor and friend and then he sent me to pandit brijbhushan ka brother pioneer of indian classical guitar uh, from 8445 to 1992 93 and in 1993 i was invited by india festival by itc and usa zakir hussain played with me in two concerts one in was in harvard university and one was uh, in uh, ohio cincinnati duet with pandit viji jog violinist and i remember those sweet moments and then my guru brijbhushan kabra sent me to ustad ali akbar khan in california in 2000 uh, 1998 1995 i found that this uh, instrument slide guitar is basically worldwide has been adapted in different cultures and has been modified not piano not violin not sitar not sarod they have a fixed feature 
and personality. So I started thinking of modifying my instrument to make more traditional, to play more traditional music and make a richer Indian tone, Indian voice. So it should not sound like uh, Indian classical guitar on a Gibson Super 400 nasal tone because that all the western guitar has a particular nasal tone which is their culture. Like the western mountain blues or folk singing, they have a particular nasal tone which they have put on their instrument too. But our tone is very open like ah. There is a full breath comes out with the round omkar. So I wanted to have that on a slide guitar. Then started my research work and then I have at the age of 15 I made my first chaturangi which was a round hole a jumbo guitar with the slightly change of bracing underneath and adding 20 more strings, sympathetic strings and chikari strings. So from that uh, Chaturangi in 1978, I have done lot of research and lot of changes into it with a solid wood, different size and shape, different tonalities, soundscapes, blending different Indian tonalities like Rudravina, Sitar, Sarod, violin, voice into one instrument. Then finally, I got an instrument which is, I am playing nowadays, this one. This is a hollow neck instrument, this is a hollow neck chaturangi. This has a two rhythm, rhythm strings in the front called chikari, played by the index finger and then six main six main playing strings two drone strings in the back to be played with the last so it makes a octave sound a nice drone and then the resonating strings currently tuned in Dorian scale, kafi. So this wonderful carving is being done by the craftsmen from the lineage of ivory carving families. Now ivory carving has become illegal, so we have incorporated them into making chaturangi craft crafting. The best part of this instrument is the deep tone. and it resonates much. The wood is spruce and its resonance is 1.5 second. So, which is quite a long resonance as far as the quality of wood is concerned. And uh, other part is its melodic gliding quality it actually holds the vocalism. That is why I have chosen slide guitar because I can almost mimic everything we can sing. Everything gamakas na na 
You can play everything whatever you sing. That is the speciality of this instrument called Chaturangi. And I also have made some other instruments, three other instruments. One is called Gandharvi, which has unison strings. So you strike on every time you strike on two strings. So six set, sets of unison strings called Gandharvi, which is the longest glide. And I have uh, recorded that instrument in John G's recording, Floating Point. I played one song. Um, then I have uh, made a small little slide ukulele, first ever in the world, which plays beautiful bhajan, but also it, it, it plays all the world music in, in improvisations, beautiful, deep and uh, bright tone, four stringed, small little hollow neck slide guitar as Anandi. And recently I have done an instrument, first time a slide instrument with a hide on top. That is Pushpa Bina. It has the blend of many hide instruments like banjo, like uh, rabab, like samishen, Japanese, like uh, oud, uh, like uh, sarod, uh, etc. In one instrument, it has many different blends of tone, tonalities called Pushpa Veena. In 1984, I remember my one of the great uncles had a turntable and he brought from London a disc of a Mahavishnu orchestra. So we used to go to his house to listen all the discs of Western, Hawaiian music, Indian classical music of Bari Ali Khan. Suddenly he brought this uh, disc and uh, played for me. That was 1984's Mahavishnu Orchestra recording. And that is how I came to know John G. And, uh, and his sparkling, bright performance. There was at that time there was no internet, no video, no television. Uh, so audio was the only way to understand what the music and musical personality is. To gaze. And 84, 17 years later, I received a uh, communication from John G and Zakir G invited me to play for Remember Shakti in Mumbai, in Shanmukhanand Auditorium. That was my first actual visit of John G. I played with Zakir G before, but I, that was the first introduction to John G and Yusri Vash. Zakir G, Viku Vinakram, all were sitting the glittering gold of Indian music and whatever you call. Since then, we have we have become friend and i really was amazed it was a mind changing performance and i have got a little tour with the band performing performed in the festivals like um, uh, montreux jazz festival and uh, nice jazz festival those kind of festivals then in Floating Point, John G invited me to record in one of his songs. And then 2013, John G played in my album, Beyond the Ragasphere, my composition, 
mystical morning which was set in rag charukeshi 11 bit cycle that is how we have become friends during the pandemic when younger musicians were leaving the profession doing something which is not supposed to be done to survive i started a series of online concert for helping younger musicians call of the soul john g endorsed that two years ago i have this recording in my hand i wanted to release and i asked john g that can i send some of my recording i want to release i sent him the email in couple of weeks he sent me the message this is a wonderful uh wonderful record if you want to if you want me to help you i will i would like to endorse this album and then he named the album he has written the yeah everything and uh, this album is releasing today 24th january all over the world the sound of the soul it has four tracks uh recorded in studio but in a live format no editing no overlay no dubbing no so um these four tracks one is with a barrel drum pakhawaj it's a temple music very fast tempo 10 bit cycle uh, and uh, this this is the composition that's a track number 1 and then i played very uh, meditative long alap in rag bageshri bageshri is the name of ma saraswati bageshwari bageshwari bag means the tongue the, the uttering organ the sounding organ is our tongue so the deity who sits on our tongue and give us the power to talk or sing is bageshwari and uh, so that has been played for 39 minutes alap and uh, composition in slow paced rupak tal and uh, amazing tabla accompaniment by the legendary tabla maestro pandit swapan choudhury ji and uh, that that session is amazing i mean i just forgot myself what i am doing where i am sitting who is with me everything it was just like a nasha you know and um, so this album we dedicated to ustad ali akbar khan sahab's centennial and also john g's 80th birthday year is going on and my 60th too <laughs> so 60 80 and 100 all the gurus in front of me and um, so that was i played bageshri and then we played a composition uh, in rag pahadi which is a mountain folk shapan ji also accompanied in that so that was basically the sound of the soul and uh, it is releasing today and it is available from abstractlogics.com right and uh, what else <laughs> <laughs> and i played this instrument the all the compositions i played on this instrument <laughs> 